Howdy. So in this video, we're going to look at uh, how to create tiling textures uh, from 3D models using Substance Painter. Um, it, it wouldn't be probably most people's first choice for doing this. Um, there are a load of really good tools out there uh, that you can do this kind of thing in. Um, but as we've been using Substance Painter anyway, uh, I thought I'll have a look. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is first off is I'm going to create a plane and I'm going to set it to be one meter by one meter. There it is, and I'm going to Uh, I'm going to snap its pivot to the center of the world. It's in absolute terms. Yes, there it is. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to create uh, some base geometry for some... I'm going to make a tiling wall. So we just need to make some geometry that will tile. Um, so I'm actually going to do that by building blocks and then kind of moving them into place and it will be easier for to show you. So I'm just going to create a box. I'm going to knock that off because I don't want it to be too... I don't want it to snap to anything. I'm going to do these quite big just so I can... I don't have to basically make too many for this example. So I've got one big piece here like this. And if I place it where I want... Um, so if we look at this in a perspective view... Then, if you imagine this plane is basically going to be the texture, uh, then we want this this object to be able to repeat. So, if we repeat the texture, then the object will as well. So, for that, I'm going to basically offset it. So, I've got this is going to be my first brick or tile. Uh, so, I want to offset it. So, I'm going to set this to absolute mode. Um, so, that basically means I can offset the block by an amount. I know this is a meter long, so I want to offset this by a meter. So if I hit Control V to duplicate it, I'm going to duplicate as an instance because any changes I make to this will be changed, will change the other ones that the other objects that are placed, um, which is what we want, um, so that it, they're all the same. And I'm going to, it's in Y, the positive is that direction, so I'm going to go Y, negative 1, and it will place a block in this corner. So if this was tiled, this top part would match this bottom part. And that's the idea. So I'm going to just go around and do that again. But this time I'm going to offset in positive x by 1. Um, and then again, control V. And I'm going to, if I did that, do that. No, it didn't. Because I'm still selecting that. Control V to make a duplicate, an instance. And I want to go in positive Y this time. So 1 and Y. And there we go. So there are duplicates. So if we just kept duplicating these along, we would get a tiling, you know, a tiling set of blocks. So that's my first block in. Um, I'm going to make a new block. Uh, I'm just going to make a copy this time because I don't want to because I want to make some changes to it um, and I'm going to convert it to an editable poly and I'm going to just eyeball some changes to it. Obviously you could scale, rotate, whatever you want to do. This is just a... So I'm going to place it so that it lines up Pretty well with the edge of that the view so then I don't need to so I don't need to duplicate this one because if you imagine the duplicate of this one would be well if we just did it I'll just show you duplicate this one let's instance yes and offset in positive X by one you see that it just fits outside where our texture would be so we don't need to worry about that 
Uh, to make it nice and easy to work out what's going on, I'm going to change the color of this. Uh, so I'm going to make this one gray. Um, and any new duplicate I make, I'm just going to change the color of it. So let's get something up in. I'm just going to make a copy of that, push that into there. And I'm going to make this one just to kind of make it a little bit more interesting. I'll set it a bit more. I'm going to change the color of it to red. Uh, I'm also going to change the height of it a bit. So I just skewed it, change the height of it a bit. Sure, it'll make any difference actually because we're not going to deal with a height map, so that's maybe pointless. Uh, all right, so I'm going to offset this one, so control V to make an instance of it, and then I'm going to offset in negative Y minus one. There we go, so that's where that one would sit in the repeat. Uh, so let's have. Duplicate of that. Well, let's do it a different way. Let's take that. Let's place that there. Let's say that one's like that. Change the color of it, and then I'm going to duplicate this, and I'm going to OK, and then I'm going to push this up in positive Y. So now that I've got an instance of it, I can now change this. And you can see that it'll change this as well. So maybe I want this to go all the way to here, so it is in line with it, or maybe I want it to go, you know, further or not as far. Let's say that. Then we know that they're going to be the same on both sides. So yeah, so that's basically the technique. Um, so I'll just go in and basically make blocks for the rest of it. Okay, so we've got our blocks ready to go. Um, so all I need to do uh, is just, uh, well, I'm going to save this first. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the duplicates. And there's another one there. And then what we've got is we've basically got a set of mesh meshes that we could then repeat and should be able to build a tile from. Um, okay, so I'm just going to take all of these. And in fact, I'm just going to create a new layer and call it base blocks plane. So let's grab all of those. And I'm just going to drop all of those into that one. And then I'm just left with my plane, which makes it nice and easier. So I select this layer. And that will export uh, to box export low. I'm going to export it as an OBG. And there we go, save. Yeah, using the ZBrush profile, that's fine. Export done. Okay, so in ZBrush, I'm going to import. In fact, I'm going to set this document up first. Import. Oh, I've imported it. I'm going to draw it into the canvas. Edit. 
I don't think that's the right way up. I mean, to be fair, it's not going to matter too much because I'm not being that precious. Um, but I can double check. Let's just check that's the right way. That's, not, that's the right way. Okay, so that's the right way up. Right. So uh, it's come in. It's all together in one subtool. To be fair, that. As these are all separate parts and they're all blocks, I've kept the backs in, so they should be fine. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, under Geometry, I'm going to Dynamesh them. And I'm going to start a bit higher than that. I'll start about 500. Dynamesh. Yeah, and they don't look too bad. Um, so now let's try a trim dynamic on those. Yeah, if what we want to do, that's probably going to be all right. Okay. So detailed enough at that. Um, and if we go to, because they're separate objects, they should all be separate come in a separate polygroup so that's fine so I don't need to change that either um, so I should be able to just go control shift click yeah and I can select them so that's cool as well okay well none of those are dynameshed I must have undone something uh, so let's dynamesh them quickly uh, 500 Okay. Yeah, don't know what I did there. Must have undone it. Oh, it would have been when I trim dynamic. Did the trim dynamic? I just undid too many times. Ace. Right. So I can switch that off. So I can just work on these. And essentially, all I'm going to do is just quickly sculpt these up, which you know, it's nothing new. So I'll do one. Um, I'll do a smaller one. Uh, let's so essentially just this is just really just for demoing but uh, so B T D to get to brush trim dynamic brush make it a bit smaller and I'm just gonna carve in its edges probably could do with a bit more res actually jump, jump out and just push the res up a little bit more uh, let's just uh, divide the lot. There we go, and uh, back into there, and I'll grab these corners just because I want to. Them to not be totally flat. I don't generally need to do the bottom of them too much. Um, There's tons of tutorials on how to do this, so this is not like um, I'm not doing anything that's revolutionary here. Right, so as soon as I get to the, something like the faces I want, I'm going to go with something like that. Okay, then I'm just going to hit the standard brush, so that's B S T, and just size up a bit. Off. Got it. Right, so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to go back to B, T, D, back to the Bush Trim Dynamic, and then I'm just going to carve out 
some detail out of that. Sort of bigger forms, so it kind of makes it a bit. So once you're happy with all of that, then you can. Oh, I'll just I'll just quickly uh, go back in the standard brush, change the focal shift, a bit smaller. Alt down to get some dots in there. Once you're done and you're happy, just move that out, shift, smooth those out a bit. Then you can go through uh, shift and do the others. Which I'm going to go and do now, and what you'll end up with are basically a bunch of stones, which are or tiles, which are ready to be duplicated. And um, so we'll come back after I've done that. Okay, so I just quickly sculpted up some some blocks, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the subtool, and I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to select this second one. And uh, I'm going to decimate it so that we can get it back into Max <coughs> and work with it in Max. I mean, you could do this stuff in in ZBrush, but um, well, those who know me now. I hate working in ZBrush generally, um, and I find it just easier to move around in other programs than ZBrush. So this is the way I'm going to do it. Uh, so go to the plugin, and I'm just going to pull that down there. And look at Decimation Master. And I'm going to pre process the current one, which is going to take a minute or two. Okay, so that's pre processed. Uh, let's get this down to about 100k. And let's decimate current. There we go. Right, so look at this one. Switch this off. Uh, so there you go, you can see that it's basically pulled a few polys out of that, which is all good, um, and it still looks okay. So let's just quickly export this, and we've got this one selected. Let's go to export, let's call this uh, blocks export. ZB 100k file import blocks export ZB 100k open. Uh, so I bring it as an editable poly. Everything else should be fine. Import. Uh, it drops it into this thing we've got hidden. It's here. It's this group 8643. So I just pull that back out of there. And we should be able to see it. There we go. There he is. So it was just hidden in that lock. So you can see it matches up pretty well. So now this has been exported, I'm going to duplicate it. Uh, so as we did before, Control V, and it can be an instance. That's fine. And I'm still got absolute, oh, sorry, offset mode on here. So I'm going to offset it by one in X. And then you can see that this part here, this is where it would tile. Um, so I'm going to do the same with this. I'm going to push it down. Uh, so Control V. As an instance, yes. And I'm going to duplicate it by or move it, offset it by negative one in Y. And then you can see there's this little bit we've got less that left over, which is basically the duplicate of this one. So I'm going to do the same thing. Control V. Instance, yes. And I'm going to offset again by negative one in Y. So now what we've got is we've basically got a full, uh, or the ability to have um, a full tile 
thing tiled four times. Now what we can do is we could take this plane and we could actually move it to somewhere where it's maybe a bit more a bit more useful. Say somewhere like that. Or right across the middle of things. In fact we could do that just to show how that works. So there that's fine like that. And basically what we should be able to do is bake the information from the high down onto the low and we'll get a nice timing texture. So that's what we're going to sort out next. Okay, so I'm going to export out this plane. Let's just double check everything's right with it. It's generated mapping coordinates so they should be okay. Just to prove it, I'm going to convert this to an editable poly. I'm going to look at the uh, quick unwrap on it and open it in the UV editor and as you can see it's mapped that face is just mapped 0 to 1 so that will give us uh, exactly what we're after okay so I'm going to export that plane as a uh, file export selected and I'm going to export that as or, uh, block Low. Uh, and now I'm going to save it as an FBX actually. So let's call it wall low FBX. Save. Yes, that's fine. Okay. And then this I'm going to export out as well um, as the high version of it. However, I'm going to change a few things just before I do that. So let's take this plane. Uh, let's Make a duplicate of it. Okay. Um, I'm going to let this plane sit outside of here. That's. I'm going to move it back into base blocks. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so it's out of the way. And this plane, I'm going to scale up. Um, just because I'm actually going to use it as the floor for this. Um, doesn't really matter if it doesn't, the UV coordinates, any of that stuff really matters. And then what I'm going to do is, in the materials, is I'm going to uh, set these as one material, uh, and then I'm going to set the base as this material, and then when I export it out, I'll be able to use the material IDs as well. So I'm going to export this lot out as the high version. So export selected as uh, wall high. Okay, and then we're going to have a look at it in Substance. Okay, so we're in Substance Painter. Um, I've tried to bring this in already, and, and I mustn't have export, hit export selected. So I've brought everything in. Uh, so I've just re done that part and hopefully now if I bring the wall low FBX in yes it only brings the plane in which is what we want okay so you may it may come in like this and you're like where is it it's because it's not double sided so you just need to hold alt down and left and the left mouse button and get it into the frame so you can see it okay so that's that's a good start the next thing is we need to uh, bake the map. So in the texture set settings, we go to bake textures. Um, we want to bring our uh, wall high in. So we've got that. And I'm just going to, as I've done before, I'm just going to bake the normal map first just to see if there's any issues. We probably will have some issues. Um, so let's see what they are. Yeah, so here we go. That's not what we wanted. Uh, the reason is that it's basically not catching at all uh, in the bake. So if we go back to bake textures, we need to change this these uh, frontal distance. I may as well just bang them both on just to try it and then try again until we get the whole thing in. Now I've got the whole thing in. Uh, that's fine. So basically what it was doing was when it was doing the search for what it should try and bake down, it just wasn't finding 
because because one of these meshes is sticking up and the other one is completely flat the cage or the, the two meshes don't line up particularly well okay so that's what we have uh, so in theory this should tile with no problems um, and uh, we can just go ahead and work on this as we would work on anything else so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bake the rest of it I'm going to push this output size to 2048 I don't think we're going to work on anything bigger than that and in the ID map I'm going to make sure we're set to material color and it's hue shift then everything else should go bake them okay so that's done and as you can see we've got something that is uh, ready to go now um, if you want to double check how well this works uh, there's there's a few ways you can do it however I think the easiest one or the one that's kind of most immediate is um, if we just jump back into max and switch all this off and we go back to our original plane uh, so let's just focus on this guy here so if we take our plane and this is mapped from 0 to 1 in both directions if we uh, stick the snaps toggle on hold shift down and pull we can make a copy of it again could be an instance if you want and we can just snap it and then so that basically will allow us to see the tail how it would tile this side should match this side that side you know this side should match this side so let's grab all of these scale them this way and let's do it one more time so that we've got if this one is the central one we've basically got tile working you can see three by three tile set we actually just take this and export it export selected this time and we, I'm going to save it as a wall low tile save yes yes that's all fine now what we can do is we could go to edit and project configuration and normally what we do is we would be basically if we'd made some slight changes to the model we could then bring the new version of it in and it would recalculate this stuff um, but what we're actually going to do is swap the model out for this one um, and if we hit OK then what it should do is it will create our it will show us our tile uh, let me just delete that layer because I've managed to put some paint in it without meaning to um, which is pretty cool um, if we look at the wireframe uh, so I'm going to the here yeah, down here then you can actually see the central one is the one that we were we originally worked on and we did the bake from but we can see the tile working the cool thing is as well is that you can so if I create a just a, a paint layer uh, here uh, I can just I can paint here and you can actually see how it repeats so you can actually paint directly onto it and um, it will work so that's pretty cool. Uh, let me delete that. But other than that, we can just set this up kind of like how we normally would. It has all these things baked out, so um, it's quite useful. So if we say start with a fill layer that was uh, grab color for it, something like this, um, and no metal no normal no height and completely rough then uh, add another fill layer on top uh, again let's grab, grab a so 
something that's maybe a bit brighter just to show that off um, less rough but still rough and then black mask as we've done before add generator use the mask editor well we've already got something <laughs> that's pretty cool um, so going to curvature uh, I'm going to make this uh, I'm just going to make this to 2048 just so it won't completely chug um, but we can have a look at this and then we go right well we want to play with the curvature uh, let's pull everything down um, and let's just start with the kind of detail we want to get in something like that So there you go. It's not a bad start, is it? Um, and obviously you can build these layers up and make something which is uh, really nice. Um, I'm just going to maybe make that a little bit warmer. Then I'll duplicate that layer. Quickly add something a lot lighter. Then go back into my mask editor. Go back to curvature. Uh, let's pull all of this back down again. And do the sharp stuff. Fine. Just to pull the edges out. There we go. So we're getting some sharp detail. Then maybe on this one we will. Uh, Add another filter, add a warp to that. Just give the edge a bit, almost like it's been drawn in. Um, and maybe just on that mask editor, I uh, will. Oh, I'm just messing about now, aren't I? Add some texture and load a texture into this slot of kind of something like that and then we can okay so say that's our our texture Okay, you get the idea. Then I'm going to bang all of those in a folder. In fact, no, I don't need to. I'm going to create a folder. And I'm going to call this uh, mortar tile. In this one, I'm just going to add, um, I'm going to drop that into that folder. Um, in the folder, I'm going to add a black mask and I'm going to add color selection and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my color from my ID mask I'm going to pick pink and then what we've got is we've got a separation between the two so we've taken the from the high detail model we've essentially created a mask that we can use uh, which is really useful and um, I'm then going to set this to be something Add new fill layer on top, uh, make it really, really dark. Um, no metal, roughness is fine, right up. And we're going to add a black mask, and again, add a generator, and then add mask editor. And we're going to use ambient occlusion this time, and we're going to set the blending mode to normal. Let's have a look at what that looks like. So Alt and then click on the mask. There we go, we get an idea of what we're dealing with. Uh, 
So we can change the amount of blur that's used and then push the contrast up. Maybe, there we go, we get something which is kind of. There we go, something like that. You go back to material, then you can actually see. And the inclusion being added, and we can just sit and play with it to get what we want balance. That's something we're happy with. Then we can, we can change that color to something a bit more complementary, a bit more interesting. Ooh, red's good. Cool. <laughs> there you go. That's a bit nuts. Um, so say that's what you want to make, and you're happy with all of that, and it's done. You know it tiles. Then all you got to do is uh, export the textures, and it'll only export the stuff that's within zero to one. So it'll, it won't export all of this. It only export the tiling part. Um, decide where you want to save it. Uh, let's save it to. Uh, Tileable output. Okay. Default material. I'm going to send. So I'm going to save it as 2048. I'm going to save it as PNGs. Fine. Um, I'm just going to use the default. This default configuration I've got set up. Uh, I'm just going to export. Open a folder. And I've got a bunch of maps in there. So if I just open Potato Shop up. Okay, so that's the albedo uh, from the export. And just to test that it actually uh, does work. I think that's been chopped off at the top. So let me just bring that in a bit so you can actually see it. Um, then we just go to Filter other offset and uh, the offset value is here is set to 1024 by 1024 so it's offsetting it in that direction that direction and um, so you can see whatever way I shift it tiles fine and um, so you've got a tileable texture uh, using substance painter